Well, oneness is the recognition that A, we are part of one planet and we are one humanity. And unless we live with that consciousness and shape every moment of our production and consumption with that consciousness, we are going to destroy ourselves, which we are. The melting of the glaciers is one of the very severe indicators. The 1%, of course, is the symbol of the concentration of wealth under, under the rules of the neoliberal economies that are basically, on the one hand, turning every natural resource into a war zone. Even the Venezuelan issue is really a war over oil. But war over seeds, that's my life's work, to keep seeds free, because they literally are war over control of seeds by a poison cartel of three. Monsanto and Bayer, Syngenta and ChemChina, Darwin DuPont, all of them with their roots in Hitler's Germany and finding chemicals to kill people. No wonder they're still killing people. No wonder they're killing our butterflies and our bees and our pollinators. And every indicator is showing we are not just in a severe climate catastrophe, we are in the sixth mass extinction. And both the species extinction and the climate catastrophe are two sides of the same coin. Now, can you imagine every day, two billion added to the wealth of the thieves, the stealers, the casino players? And not only are they accumulating more wealth, they're converting the real lives of people into their wealth. My work is on seeds to prevent seeds from becoming the wealth of these giants. And Bill Gates has a very big role in pushing GMOs in Africa and through the Alliance for the Green Revolution in Africa, pushing patents on seeds against the laws, the sovereign laws that countries like India have created. But they are privatizing water. He is part of geoengineering, the extremely false solution to the climate crisis, the melting of glaciers. And I remember in 2009, we did a study on the third pole, on the Himalayan ecosystems, the impact on climate change. And all the pressure was put by the polluters to say, deny that the glaciers are melting, deny. Our government flipped overnight to say they're not melting. Actually, they're increasing. So these new reports are extremely important. And the Himalaya, Himalayan snows don't just support the people in the Himalaya, they support half of humanity. Because all the rivers, the most densely populated part of the world, emerge from the Himalaya. And the consequences of this are huge. But the most important thing is, those women in Ladakh with whom I work, the Women's Alliance, they don't use one drop of oil or one ounce of gas. They are totally in a renewable energy economy and they are being punished. That's why climate justice is such an important part of avoiding climate catastrophe. So how does it feel to come to the United States? Because what you're saying, the denial of the effects of climate change is very Trumpian. Well, sadly, in that case, it was President Obama. Because he flew into Singapore to tell the governments, stop pushing for legally binding emissions. He flew into Copenhagen after having received the Nobel Peace Prize and caught, called the five worst polluters, India, China included now, and said, let's get rid of the legally binding convention. And that's why Paris is merely an agreement. It's not the legally binding UN framework convention with emissions that were legally binding. And it was in the middle of the negotiations, he announced we've come to an agreement. And that's when Eva Morales, the president of Bolivia, got up and said, we were here to fight for the rights of Mother Earth. We weren't here for the rights of polluters. And all of us are negotiating inside the hall. Five people get together and say, we've come to an agreement to destroy the Earth. That's why he worked on the rights of Mother Earth and called many of us to become the drafting team for the draft declaration, universal draft declaration on the rights of Mother Earth, which is available for people. And the work on the movement for the rights of nature has grown out of that, mm. out of the failure of Copenhagen. So you're talking about 10 years ago, in 2009, Ten years ago, yes. when President Obama flew into Copenhagen at the UN Climate Summit. Which is the tragedy these days, that um, the 1% money machine has become so powerful that it actually controls the political machine in a very big way. And we know the elections of the US was Facebook handing over to Cambridge Analytica, the technology angle, and you got the first artificial intelligence president based on algorithms of hate. 
hate for women, hate for blacks, hate for Muslims, hate for migrants. Now you can't run democracy on the hate machine. And you can't run democracy by the hate machine being fueled through the divide and rule policy of the 1% to destroy our oneness, our solidarity, our recognition that we are one humanity and can be strong when we fight for the rights of the planet and for our basic rights to food and water and livelihoods and justice and democracy. We've just done a book on biodiversity, agroecology and regenerative organic agriculture, which is 31 years of our practice and research because I can't see thinking separate from action. We find we can feed two times India's population, two times India's population by conserving biodiversity, providing more nutrition per acre. The more biodiverse the system and organic systems produce more nutrition. Farmers earn 10 times more by not spending precious money on chemicals and big machines and the Monsantos and the buyers of the world are imagining an agriculture without farmers. Farming without farmers, farming with drones, farming with spy men, the tactors, farming with robots, farming with intelligent and in, uh, artificial intelligence. They're talking about digital agriculture where you don't need people. But that means no one to care for the land because agriculture means care for the land. We need the Green New Deal, which is such an amazing discussion in this country. And the Green New Deal has to be to put more people on the land, just like during the Dust Bowl and the Depression. Hands healed the Dust Bowl. We need hands to heal the planet. We have solutions to climate change because it's only through taking the excess carbon and the excess nitrogen out of the air can we heal the broken nitrogen cycle and the carbon cycle? Ecological farming, biodiverse intensive farming does that. And we only need to add 2%. And 10 years we can solve the climate crisis. With 0.5% organic matter, we can get rid of the drought. Explain exactly what you mean to the non-farmer audience. <laughs> So the basic problem of climate change is that the planetary boundaries have been ruptured. There's a limit of cycling of carbon, of nitrogen and other minerals and elements. By taking fossil fuels out from underground and burning them at a very high speed, 600 million years of nature's work, 20 million years being burnt every year. We are putting too much carbon dioxide into the atmosphere, which is why we have climate change. We use some of this fossil fuel to then make nitrogen fertilizers, which emits a nitrous oxide, which is 300 times more deadly for the climate. You get rid of chemicals, you get rid of fossil fuels, and you start doing organic, all that excess carbon can be pulled back by the plants and put back in the soil, which is why I wrote the book, Soil Not Oil. When you put nitrogen fixing plants, the pulses, you know, everyone's now talking of plant-based diets, proteins from plants. We did it in India forever with our lovely dal, our pulses. They fix nitrogen non-violently. You don't have to blast fossil fuels at high temperature to fix atmospheric nitrogen. The plants have the intelligence to do it peacefully and give us good protein the same way while fixing the broken nitrogen cycle. But if you look at the planetary boundaries graph, the nitrogen cycle is and the biodiversity system is the most abused. And in every one of these problems, whether it's hunger or the chronic disease epidemic or climate change or species, you know, the pollinators on our farm are six times more than the pollinators on the forest. And now every year we offer a one month course on the practice of biodiversity, agroecology and organic food systems everywhere. The world is being healed with a lot of solidarity, a lot of oneness between ourselves and the web of life and a reclaiming of the art, our intelligence. Intelligence will never be artificial. Real intelligence is what makes us live. Life is intelligence. Intelligence is democracy. Hmm.